Hey guys, it's Jacqueline Cosplay. Sorry for the delay on this video. I ended up having a lot more footage to work with this time around, so I put it into two parts. In part one, I'm going to talk about how I did the teeth making and the sewing slash clothing part of it. And then in part two, I'll go over the wig styling and the spear making part of it. If you want to watch part two, it should be linked at the end of this video along with in the description box below. And in the description box, it should also have my social media links in case you are interested. Uh, I hope you'll like the video. I worked really hard on it. Uh, and thanks so much for watching. Uh, uh, the voiceover, yeah, pick up. <laughs> okay guys, so first I'm starting off with making the teeth for the cosplay. I didn't make all of them by hand because that would have taken forever. Just making these three took like two hours. I don't know why. But um, first what I do is I make a foil base for them and then like in the general shape of what I'm going for. And then I take some clay and I flatten it out and then I cover it fully on the foil. And then I try to like smooth it out and then add ridges to make it look a little bit more like teeth. Uh, I say that if this is supposed to be a time-saving thing, but it wasn't. <laughs> it took a long time to do and um, the conditioning took really long, which is what you see there, but what I did was I took the ball side of the tool and I like punched it into it, which really helped with conditioning the clay because it's like rock hard at first because it's kind of cold where I am. But uh, yeah, I just use the side of my sculpting tools to roll it out because I'm cheap and I didn't feel like getting a clay rolling pin because that's pointless. But um, what I do is I just flatten out like circles, add them to the thing, and then at the end, once it's fully covered, I'll smooth it out fully and then add ridges and everything. Okay, so once those were done, I coated it in a layer of spray, like clear, like spray paint, I guess. And then I used this mold builder, which is basically liquid latex. But it's a lot more toxic. You can't use this on your skin, like with prosthetics. So I have a mask on, and actually I should have had a much better mask on because I was still able to breathe it, and technically you're not supposed to, but it's okay, I didn't die. Uh, I wouldn't really suggest this for beginners though because it was a really hard to get a good grip on these while they were still wet and everything like they kept knocking over like you see there and what I ended up doing was I added pins to the bottom of them to give me something to hold on to and something for them to stand on while drying because I needed to have a lot of drying time for these and they needed 10 coats so yeah, it, it just took a long time, so I did that to make it easier. And after the 10 coats, I was able to like peel them off. And they don't look like what you think they look like, okay? We're not gonna talk about that. But <laughs> uh, I ended up add adding um, a metal, a wire frame around it to hold up the circle shape at the opening because that helped a lot with putting the casting plaster in you know and what I also ended up doing was adding pins to it to hold the uh, wire to the rubber latex because so after the first one I went after the first pair of, like casting I went through I had to re put it onto the wire thing because they didn't stay but here I'm using perfect cast it's just a quick drying casting material which you can obviously read there but it's in a you put just add water in a one to three ratio and mix it until it's smooth tap it to take out any excess bubbles and then pour it into the mold because uh, make sure you do this quickly because it starts to harden pretty quick pretty fast um, and I left them to dry for 30 to 45 minutes and then took them out because they were hard enough to keep their shape after that. And then they continued drying on this egg carton thing I had lying around. Okay. 
Okay, so I did this about six times. So I ended up with 18 total because there's three teeth. And those are the pins I added to add stability to it. And then some of them ended up with some gaps because there were some bubbles that ended up into the mold. But I was okay with that because it made them look a little bit more unique and different from each other. So that it wasn't just three identical teeth six times. Uh, if you're gonna do this, make sure you have a lot of time because you can't do this kind of thing last minute like I did. It was pretty risky of me to do that. So now I'm going to go on to the clothing part of this. I'm making the top part right now. I just cut off the bottom part to make it really jagged and everything. And then I added a nice thin strip of fur to the top really easily with a zigzag stitch. And then on the sides, I added um, some twill tape to strengthen it and then added grommets because if I didn't add the twill tape it would have just ripped the fabric when I tried to pull on it with the lacing and then I tried it on and moved on to the armbands which I didn't really get a good shot of but uh, it's basically the same as the top where I add fur to the tops of little rectangles the size of my arms and then that was it I just added some strips that you'll see later when I'm painting. But now I'm moving on to the line cloth, which I made two long rectangles of equal size, and then I cut in them into jagged triangles, and then held it up to my body to make sure it was the right length, cut it to the right length, and then added some holes on the inside because it made it a little bit more jagged looking and old looking and stuff, like she was out in the wild. And then I did the same thing for the other side, which I like this side a little bit better because I actually was getting used to it. <laughs> but to make the little holes, you just pinch twist the, like pinch and twist the fabric and then cut it so that it'll be really uneven and jagged like that. And then after that, I took a piece of fur fabric that was the same length as around my waist and then I cut it a little bit on that like jagged line I made to make it uneven. And then I sewed the front and back to it, making sure that they were both centered on, you know, the front and back. Uh, this was a really easy thing to sew. So if you're not very good at sewing or you're not if you want to get into cosplay but you don't know how to sew, this would be a good cosplay to start with just because I literally just had to sew edges onto things and that was it. So you see here that I have it centered and that I'm trying it on myself to make sure it looks okay. And then I closed the back of it because it was one long strip and then sew the back onto it because if I didn't it would just sewing it onto an open back, which doesn't make sense, but it makes sense to me, it's okay. Okay, and then I tried it on one more time to make sure it looked okay, and then I moved on to painting. For the painting, I basically just took brown and black and greens and stuff like that to add a good darker edge to the fabric because when I had tried it on, the lighter fabric was a little bit too close to my own skin color so it looked like I wasn't wearing anything. But adding this also added the weathered effect that makes it look like it's actually been worn to, in like the wild and everything. And it looks a little bit harsh like the edges of the paint. I tried to make it fade in a little bit more, but once it dried, it looked more faded, so I was fine with it. Uh, then I also used green and red for the straps I have right there, and then there's the green straps you saw earlier in the video. And then uh, that was just to cover the white thread I had holding it to the fabric, and then also to add shading. And then I painted the teeth with some whites, browns, and black. And because in the 3D model of Nidalee, she has these little swirls on her waist teeth. 
so I added those with pink. Actual artwork for her, the teeth on her neck are white, but in the game model, her teeth are black, so I decided to add more variety by doing that. Okay, so that's it for the teeth making and the actual clothing part of the cosplay. Part 2 should already be up and linked on the screen and also down in the description box, so go check that out because it'll have the actual finished product showcased at the end. Thanks for watching, I hope y'all liked it. Subscribe for more future cosplay making of videos and comment down below with all the questions or requests for future cosplays you may have. Thanks!